In this class, learn how to turn simple crochet thread strung with beads into a gorgeous spiraling beaded rope. Hi there, Sandy here. Thank you for taking this spiraling bead crochet class. Although bead crochet can be done on just about any medium that you can crochet with and that will hold the beads, it's usually done on this. This is crochet cotton. You'll find this in your craft store in balls. It comes in different sizes. Size 10 is a good average size for bead crochet. It fits the holes of most beads, even small like check fire polish beads. We'll talk more about the beads in a minute. It comes in a wide variety of colors so you can match your beads. It's strong, flexible, and it's made for crocheting with. That being said, you can certainly crochet with beads with other materials. You might try Eslon, a finer gauge of Eslon, and other things that you have. I would suggest though, if you do, you might want to just do a small section first. Don't get yourself all don't get all set up for a big piece of crochet work until you've just done a little sample, a little two inch sample or so to test it out and make sure that you like the way it works when you're crocheting and that you like the way it looks. Of course, for doing beaded crochet, we need beads. And there are all sorts of beads you can use. Pretty much your imagination is the limit. The other limit would be that you don't want to use beads that have sharp edges. So avoid things like crystals or bugle beads or any kind of glass bead that has a very sharp edge because the crochet cotton can be frayed and eventually cut through. I made a kumihimo bracelet once with beautiful briolettes sticking out of it. It was really quite lovely to behold until the briolettes cut through my Eslon and then uh, I haven't yet figured out how to repair the thing. So that was an awful lot of work that now is broken and languishing in a drawer. So don't use crystals. Of great bead to use are these these are Czech fire polish beads. Here are a few on their strands. Fire polishing, what that means, that's not some magical process. It sounds like something a dragon would do. But what fire polishing actually is, well, if you know anything about glass and molten glass, it actually has a very high surface tension when melted. It wants to be round. So when you have a faceted bead and you have these sharp edges that have been faceted and cut, picture something like a Swarovski crystal with those sharp cut edges, it's just run through a flame and the flame polishes those or it softens them. Basically it starts to melt them on those very edges. It starts to melt them and because the glass wants to be round, those edges become rounded and softer. And that makes them ideal for something like crocheting where you don't want sharp edges that the beads are going to cut through. So you can use seed beads, size eight, size six, any size you want, really. Size eight is considered a really good size it's just comfortable to work with and they sit nicely and it doesn't, it's not like using 15s, that would be crazy. <laughs> this section of bead crochet is actually done with four millimeter check fire polish beads. This one consists of all three millimeter check fire polish beads except for one of my beads is a five millimeter melon bead. And you can see by having two different sizes this five millimeter pops out and you get this wonderful textural spiral happening in your piece. I'll talk more about other beads you can use, but just keep in mind, don't use things with sharp edges. Otherwise, pick a bunch of beads that you like that you can string onto some cord. The other thing you'll need is a crochet hook. Now, if you've never crocheted before, that's okay. I've crocheted my whole life, but don't worry about it. You don't have to have we're really just doing chaining and slip stitches. We're not even doing any of the crochet stitches. So let me show you the most basic. If you're a crafter, you may already know this, but this is just for everybody who doesn't know it. The first thing we're going to do is make a slip knot. We need to start with a loop. 
So hold the end of your thread in one hand and you might want to leave a little bit of a tail. Take the other hand, end in your other hand and just give it a twist so that it's looping over itself. Now while you're holding that loop, reach through it with your thumb and your index finger and grab that other end of the thread and pull. And that's your slip knot and it's called that because you can pull this end and it slips through so you can tighten it up as tight or as loose as you want it to be. I'll show you that one more time and by the way if you leave too long a tail or too short or you're just not happy with it, a pull and it comes right out. So again, make a loop, reach through the loop, so I'll show you from here, with your thumb and index finger and grab that bit of th thread. And that's it. That's how you make a slip knot. The next thing to do is to make a chain. Now, like I said, you don't have to know how to crochet, but it does help because there is a little bit of muscle memory involved in how you hold the hook. So you may want to just practice with a ball of string and your hook, like I'm doing here, until it starts to get comfortable, if you've never done it before. If you've crocheted before, then you're golden, you're, you're no problem. Don't pull your loop too tight. You can pull it so that it's you know, the same diameter as the very narrow part of this hook, but for what we're doing, we don't want that. And because this slips, if you pull it too tight, if you you can always just grab the other end and make it bigger again. One end makes it bigger, one end makes it smaller, kind of like Alice in Wonderland. So we want a loop that's maybe a quarter of an inch for our beading. Now everybody who crochets and knits, I've noticed, has a different way of keeping tension on their yarn or thread. This is the way I've done it. I just leave it up between my pinky and my ring finger over my ring finger and then between my ring finger and my middle finger. And that's just enough for me so I can pull and access the thread, but it gives a little bit of tension because that's what you want. And then as it comes out here, I have it over my middle finger and I have it grasped or pinched between my index finger and thumb of my non-dominant hand. The hook I hold, and again, everybody has a different way of doing it. I'm showing you how I do it. I've been crocheting since I was a little girl. I think it was one of the first crafts I did. So this is right or wrong, this is how I do it. You lay the hook in your dominant hand. I have it resting on my middle finger, and then I have my thumb holding it there, and my index finger is helping me control the thread. And you'll see what I mean here. I usually tuck that, like to tuck that tail out of my way. So now I've got the thread coming off the ball of yarn pinched in my non-dominant hand. And I'm going to bring that under the hook, around the back, the part farthest from me, and over. This is called the yarn over, if you see it on a stitch. And at this point, did you see that, that swing around on me? I'm now switching to holding that tail or once we have some work to hold on to, I'll be holding the work with my non-dominant hand because this, I just, I'm keeping tension on this with my middle finger and index finger here. So I'm going to hold this in place because otherwise when you pull, <laughs> your yarn over is gone. <laughs> so I'll hold that in place. And I'm just going to loosen this a little. And here's a good trick. Most of the time, crochet hooks are thicker towards the middle. So if you need to loosen up your tension, you can just kind of slide your knot down over that shank, and that suddenly made it wider. Now you see there's a, there's a little itty bitty hook here. This is a size 10 crochet hook. You can, again, experiment with different sizes and see what looks you like. If you're using thicker yarn and bigger beads, you probably want a bigger hook. The hook is facing my non-dominant hand. The loop is going around the part of the crochet hook that is 
facing away from me so that when I come down like this, the hook part catches that. So you have to keep tension on this because if it's loose, well, that's not going to catch anything. So I am just pulling on my tail and on the end coming out of the ball of yarn, hook it and pull it through. And because we want bigger loops, um, I, I just took my hook, and you can see you can control the size right there. So one more time. Now I'm holding the tail here, yarn over, and, and actually it's hook under <laughs> is what I do most of the time. You'll find just as you practice this, the, mo the movements are pretty easy and intuitive. Hook and through. So yarn over, catch it when you hook with your hook. So you'll see that the angle of the hook is important. It can't be facing up at you like this. It obviously can't be going this way because then it would catch both pieces of yarn or thread. It and it can't be facing down, or it's not going to catch the right thing. The loop will just slip right off. You just want it facing your non-dominant side so that when it comes through it catches that loop and pulls it through. And this is a chain. And you notice I keep adjusting my grip on it so that I'm keeping tension on it. And if you find that your loop keeps sliding out you might want to adjust again the position of that hook. If you are enjoying this video, then be sure you thank my patrons. They are the only reason I am still making videos on YouTube. I make two bonus tutorials for them every month. You can check it out at patreon.com slash Sandy Sewin. And to those of you who are patrons, thank you so much. And this is how just about all crochet starts, is with a base row of chain. So now let's add some beads to that. Here's the project I'm going to be demonstrating on. You can see that it does really come in lots of wonderful colors. This is a ball I've had for years. I have no idea where I got it, but it's actually red with a silver thread going through it, which I thought would be really pretty for these red beads. And I'll tell you more about these beads and why I have the ones on here that I do in a bit. But let's just look at chaining with beads. Let me give myself a little room. Just gonna slide the beads down. And by the way, this really is the best way to work. Is just grab your whole ball and put the beads right on without trying to figure out how much thread you need. I've figured out that on average you need about a yard per inch of bead crochet that you want, which is a fair amount. So just leave it on the ball. That will keep your beads secure and you won't have to worry about measuring out a certain amount. So first we start with our slip knot, cross it over, pull it through. Now notice this time I pulled through this end. It doesn't matter. You can pull through either end. It will work either way. All right, so I've got my slip knot on. I'm going to slide down a few beads, and this is the way we'll work the whole time. Kind of give yourself some room because it does take up a lot of thread. But for the sake of efficiency, just slide a few beads down so that you can grab them and not go have to fetch them, you know, 10 inches down the, the uh, thread every time you need one. Next, we're going to slide down our first bead and then really pretend it's not there. Yarn over like we did before and pull the hook through the loop and make our chain. And I definitely want to do that a little looser, but pull through, make our chain. Now that happens sometimes. You can see that this yarn is actually made up of several, well, especially this one with the silver, but even just the, the cord has several plies and sometimes you'll split them. Can you see that there? And that's what happens sometimes, and you'll feel it resist and you won't pull through and get a clean loop. It's best to just pop it out, poke your hook back through and start over. It's just easier because if you've split your thread, you're not going to be able to get nice even tension. So we're just popping a bead down and doing a chain. And actually, this is, uh, you could just do something beautiful with just crocheted chain. 
You could make a whole long chain of this. You could make a wrap bracelet. Use it for a necklace cord. Use it as fringe, like a fringy dangle if you had a whole bunch of these. But it's the exact same thing, except that before each yarn over, I'm just sliding a bead down right up against the hook. Just like that. And that's a beaded chain. And that's how we're going to start all of our tubular crochet. Now here's a word of warning for you. <gasps> See how fast that came out? <laughs> When you set your bead crochet aside, if you notice this is one that I've yet to show you the details of, but this is one that I set aside and I took my loop and I made it huge, like really big, because if this gets pulled, all of this work is going to come undone. You could put a bead stopper on here, you could find other ways to do it. This works for me because it's just me. I suppose if you had cats coming along and playing with your things or something, you might want to have an even more secure way of keeping this from coming undone. This is this at the very least you need to do. Just give yourself a nice long loop so that when you come back you're right where you left off. So now that we have those out of the way, let's talk a bit about designing. The first thing you need to decide when planning a bead crochet rope is how many beads will constitute a row. You can make them as big around as you want. You could have 10 beads, you could have 20, that would be one big pretty hollow rope, but you might have a reason for making it that way. You could have four or three, although it would be tough to control and, you know, there are there are pros and cons and you have to just test them out and see what works with the size beads you have and the project you want to make. Six is a good number and that's what I'm going to show you in all of my samples today. One of the trickiest things when doing bead crochet and when, especially when learning it, is keeping track of every stitch that you need to go into. And so there's a reason why, don't lose my loop here, there's a reason why in this rope I have six beads and they are all distinctly different. In this one I have six beads in a row but I have three colors so it goes purple beige lavender, purple beige lavender and that's my row is a, a one repeat of three beads. In this one I have six different beads and they each repeat once. You can do it either way, it just helps you, and you'll see what I mean as I show you more. Another thing you can do when designing is, like I did here, just use all the same beads. Use all size 8 seed beads, or all 4 millimeter check fire polish, or all 3 millimeter check fire polish, or whatever you want. Or, for more texture, you can change the sizes. So like I showed you before, this has five three millimeter check fire polish and then one five millimeter melon bead. It's called a melon. I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but it's got little ridges around it, kind of like a, a pumpkin. What that does is that the larger bead pops out in a stripe. You could alternate. Uh, I could have alternated melon beads, the five millimeter with the three millimeter and had three stripes and had a very textural piece. Again, it's not a bad idea when you're thinking about these things and thinking about what would look nice to actually do a small test sample before you commit to using a whole bunch of beads, stringing them and then finding that you didn't really like it. For example, I loved all three of these strands of beads. And in the materials list I will have the names and where you can locate these but I don't really love them together. It kind of reads as too much gray for my taste and not nearly purpley enough. But as I showed you before, uh, it's actually pretty easy. If I find the correct end, I could just undo this all in a couple seconds. So let's take a look at this red one that I have strung here that I showed you just a minute ago. This is another good place to get kind of a test for the final look of your piece by stringing a bunch of beads and just looking at them and I can see I really like the way that looks. I, I'm going 
pretty sure I'm going to be very happy with that. This In this design, I'm taking the change of size a little further. What I have here are six different beads. I've got three three millimeter check fire polish. Then I have two four millimeter check fire polish, so a little bit bigger. And then one five millimeter melon bead, just like those blue ones and the other, except these are red. You also want to decide, do you want strong contrast, like I have here in this one, where the stripes are quite distinct? Or do you want them to kind of blend together, like I have here, where I have just a whole bunch of different shades of blue-green? And they all kind of blend together, except this outer one pops. In this one, I have gold, I have reds, and then I have gold, copper, and silver. So I think I'm going to get some stripes and a very interesting spiral where I don't just have this one popping out, but I've, I'm kind of gradating from smaller to larger. You don't have to have just six beads in a row. You can have as many as you want, but six is a good number. It gives you a nice size piece that you can do lots of things with. Use it as a necklace cord, make a bracelet, as a handle. One thing that's really cool about the bead crochet is that it's very portable once you have all of your beads strung because, well, the beads are all strung, so you don't have to deal with them if you're in a car or on a plane. You don't have to deal with beads bouncing all over the place because they're already contained handily on your thread. But you don't have to just confine yourself to round beads. You may have noticed when I demonstrated here, I actually have in the very center of my design some little mini daggers. And those are these beads, just little daggers. I don't know what happened to that one. Sometimes they don't all come out perfect. So when I come to these in my design, these little daggers are going to pop out and add another level of texture to my design. You could use larger daggers, you could use like mushroom beads, or some other kind of side drilled bead. Do keep in mind if you make them too big, it, it could be kind of lumpy and uncomfortable to wear. So that's why I stuck with just little daggers, and I just have six in the middle of my design. And what I did was I divided these melon beads in half, strung half my pattern with these, and then strung six repeats of my pattern with the daggers. And then I will finish stringing the rest of my pattern with the melon beads. So they'll just be in the middle. So just lots of variations. Again, not a bad idea to test it out and make sure you like the look because it's, it takes a little bit of time to do the crochet. It's a good project to sit and have some good music on or a good audio book. So now for stringing. Once you've picked out some beads that you think you'll like, you want to go about doing this in a very orderly way if you want to have a pattern be the result. What I have here is a flexible needle. You can tell it's very flexible. I tend to bend all my needles to heck. They're just a wreck, but it does the job. And it's got one of those collapsible eyes. And right now it is, of course, collapsed because I had just pulled it off the thread from stringing with it. So if you have to unthread it, and then re-thread it again. To open that hole back up, you just grab an awl and slide it in, and then that will open it back up so you can re-thread it. And then once you slide your first beads on, it will close up again. So then, now we can start stringing. The most important thing I can tell you about stringing is to take your time and constantly, constantly be double checking your work. If you make a mistake in the stringing that you don't catch, you can go back in and sew in a bead. If you put in an extra one, you can crush it with pliers. But it's really so much better to get it right and just take your time. And I, I find I keep missing this one for some reason, and then I'll go back and I'll have two sections without this. 
So I, you just keep going back and checking. So let's see, the last one was a silver one. And I'm working clockwise, and notice I have them all laid out nice and neat on my little board here. And you just go through and string. And you have to give it a little extra tug to close that eye up again. And work your way around, and every one or two rounds, just go back, look at your beads very carefully, and make sure that you've done the pattern right. You know, it seems like an annoyance to have to take the extra time to do that, but you'll be so happy when you, that you can crochet along and not have to stop and fix things. And yeah, you can sew them in later, but it's awfully hard to get your tension right. If you do so, it's just much better to um, take your time, double check, and get it right. So here, and then I'm just going to look at my pattern, and I've kind of got a pattern where I've got three threes, two fours, and one five. So three, two, one. And I just make sure, and you just keep stringing until you have all of your beads on. Here I've got all of my beads strung, and I have about just over a yard, 36 inches of beads strung. And here's a tip for helping you estimate how much you need to get the length you need. You take the number of beads that you have per row. In this case, I'm using six beads for each of my rows. Then you multiply that by the length of beaded cord that you want. So I want six inches to make a bracelet. Six times six is 36. So that should be just about right. Of course, there are variations depending on the size of beads that you're using. But just to give you an idea, here we have 150 beads. This is three strands of 50 beads each from the dollar bead box. These are four millimeter check fire polish, like I said. And that's giving me about four inches of tubular crochet. And one thing you might notice is that these are actually sitting in a different direction. So these are a little longer from hole to hole than they are wide. So that calculation isn't going to be exact. In this sample, I've got 42 rows of beads, six beads per row, 252 beads, and that will give me about five and a half inches of crocheted rope once I'm done. Make your estimates and allow for a little bit of room either way. So let's get on to crocheting these pretty red beads. I've got them, like I said, on my spool of thread. I actually measured out six yards and I've got plenty. If you're coming close to the end, you might want to find the end and put a bead stopper on it or something so you don't inadvertently slide them all off the end. But if you had a pretty full ball of thread, then you, you just go ahead and string them on. Like I said, it makes it a wonderfully portable project. I've got myself a bit of slack here, and I'm going to make my slip knot. I want to leave just a longer tail, just in case. Can't hurt. Okay. Make sure you're crocheting on the long piece and not the tail, if you do leave a long tail. And like I said before, just slide down a few beads, you know, maybe a couple rows worth of beads. Get our hook in the loop. Now we do want to make sure and make this beginning chain kind of loose. Otherwise it's going to be very difficult going forward. So I'm going to do just like I showed you, slide my bead down right to the hook. Make a chain. And I'm pulling it way out here so that it's loose. And I'm also going to pull that up a bit. If you make it tight, you're just going to cause yourself grief when you start doing the next row. So we've got four beads per row, so I just want to do one of each of my beads. And I find it helpful that my rows end with something I easily recognize, like these bigger melon beads. 
As with a lot of bead weaving and projects of this sort, the trickiest part is beginning, getting those first few rows established, and once you get rolling, you can actually work pretty quick. So I'm just doing a chain. And this is my sixth bead, or the end of my first row. Now this is where you gotta get just a little bit careful and precise. So now we have our initial row done, our chain, but we have to close it up into a tube because this is tubular bead crochet. And there are just a few steps you need to do very carefully and methodically, and once you get them down, you'll be able to crochet along no problem. The first is to slide down the next bead, and this is where it becomes very helpful that we used six different beads. Because right away I can see that my next bead that I want to go into in this chain, to finish the chain, is a silver 4 millimeter, and the next one I slid down is a silver 4 millimeter. So, so far, so good. Next, if you look at the chain, okay, it's not so apparent on the first one because it tends to slide around. So let me show you on the second one here. If you look at the stitch carefully, you will see that there is a loop or two threads going outside the bead underneath it. That's the chain. And then when you flip it over, there's a piece of thread going through the bead. You want to make sure that you make your stitch right into that thread that's going through the bead. You don't want to go into this chain at all. And it will matter later because everything will line up just the way we want it to if we do this very carefully. So you slide a bead down, and I'm going to put my hook right into that chain, and I'm going to pop this bead, and that's why this index finger is so useful to have hanging out here. And I've got my hook pressed up against my middle finger with my thumb, so I can use this finger to pop that bead right over to the side of the hook furthest away from me, or towards my dominant hand. Now I'm going to position this bead that I slid down the thread. It needs to be in between the one I just put my hook into and the last one I did. Don't let it sit up here. You want it down here in between. Then I'm going to yarn over and, and I'll fix that in a minute. Pull it through the loop that the bead was on and the loop that was on the hook. Pop that bead. If it Sometimes it wants to, especially in the first few rounds, it wants to kind of squeak back into the, the loop. Just pop it over. Okay. Let me do another one. So the next one is a red check fire polish. And hooray! That's the next one on the chain. So this is how you can always tell that you're in the right spot. If you use six, or even if you use three, you won't be so far off, probably, that, that you'll end up on the wrong repeat. But with six different colors, you absolutely know you're in the right spot. So I slid down my next bead, and I'm going to put my hook into that loop that's going through the bead, pop it off, slide this bead so that it is in between the last one, that silver one I did, and the one that I put the hook through. Yarn over and pull it through. And that is all there is to it. Now if you're familiar with crochet, you might be wondering when you do a, the equivalent of a step up which is something we do in crochet between rows. We're not going to do that in this, and that is what gives us the spiral. So through that loop that's coming out of the bead, pop the bead over, the new bead goes in between the one I just did and that one. Yarn over, nope, see now it popped over my, knee, my hook. Just press it back, yarn over and pull through. And at the moment it looks like a bit of a mess. 
and don't worry about that. It will start to look like something after maybe four or five rows. This is where it can be very easy to miss this one. If you didn't use all different beads, this one kind of tucks itself in and can get, kind of be hidden. So it's really helpful that I know I'm looking for that gold lined bead and not to skip it all together. Now see how that's not in the right spot. I want it between the one that I went through and the one I just did. And that one down, Oop. through, push it off to the side or towards the back of the hook, get that bead in between, yarn over, pull through. And that is all there is to it. And as you're fumbling, if you've never done anything of the sort before, you're saying, yeah, that's all there is to it. Now, oh, now sometimes that happens. If that happens, just be very careful. Have a light touch. Find your loop again. Don't go yanking or pulling on anything because like I showed you earlier, you can very quickly pull out all the stitches you just did. And that's another thing. If you find you made a mistake, you can very easily pull out all the stitches you just did. Now I'm going to do this. There. And set this aside. I'm going to show you a few things on this one where I'm a little further along so you really see the pattern and it's kind of <laughs> up down here. Um, maybe somebody else would have theirs neater than mine but that's just how mine looks at the beginning. But as you can see as you go along it really they all just snap into place and it looks wonderful. I was actually a little annoyed. I meant to string these beads on the green thread so that it would blend in better. But it actually blends in pretty well. The only place it shows is between the smallest bead and the, the melon beads. That's something to keep in mind. If you're using transparent beads, the color of your thread is going to show through. So let me show you a few other things that you might find helpful. If you decide at some point that you absolutely want to make a crocheted beaded rope with all the same colors. There are a few things you can do to help you make sure that you get your beads, your hook, into the right place. If you take a look here, I'll just use this as a pointer. You see all these check fire polish beads? They're all facing up and down. Their holes are parallel with the length of beadwork, except for this very last row I did. See that? Those are all perpendicular to the beadwork. So that can tell you that there is, that this here is a bead that has not been crocheted in yet. Let's see if it matches. If the one that's coming up on the, on the thread is matching the one I just went into and it does so good. But if you don't have that, if you, like I said, if you want them to all be one color, you can tell because of the way it's lying. It's lying sideways. And now that I've crocheted that in and added another bead, suddenly this one is facing parallel with the length of the beadwork. So you continue on till you have the length of beads that you want for your project. When you, to finish this, I've got more to do on this, but let me show you how you finish it. All you do is the slip stitch without another bead. So I'll just go through here. Probably should have pulled that tighter. Go through here. Again, pushing those beads to the outside, because if you don't, what will happen... Let's see, it's hard to tell on this one. But you have a tube of beads. It's actually, I mean, it's called tubular bead crochet. And what will happen if you don't push that bead to the outside, it will be on the inside and then you won't be able to see it. And what's the point <laughs> of doing it without being able to see the beads? So you just go around all six beads with a slip stitch. And then to finish, what you do is you 
you would, I'm not going to cut this now because I want to finish this, but you cut this thread and pull it through the loop and pull it tight and then it's fastened. So I've finished my red rope. I really like the way these little mini daggers look here. I could have done them the, on the entire thing. And these are small enough that they're not pokey. They, they would be perfectly fine and comfortable to wear. Do keep in mind if you use something longer, thicker, chunkier, that as you're wearing it, it's going to put pressure on your wrist and, and it could be uncomfortable. So keep that in mind as you're designing these and planning which beads to use. I did, however, miss a bead. Remember how I cautioned you about making sure that you uh, count? Well, I missed one. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, there it is. So all I did when I realized that I had missed one of these 3mm check fire polish beads while crocheting was I simply did the slip stitch in that spot without the bead. And when I came around again, I just did the stitch in the, the stitch that was there. There was no bead to move aside and so this bead was there. So now it's time to add that bead in and it's really very easy. I just have it in this little container. I've got one of these left. I have here just some, a needle and thread, and I've made sure to cut my knot pretty close. I cut the tails pretty close to the knot. Let's see, where is that again? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my rope. Now there's a lot of thread in here, so there will be plenty of opportunities for that knot to get cut. So if we look at this, if you look at where the stitch is, I don't want to come up right here. Because if you look at the way these are stacked, it's staggered a little. So I want to come up like maybe right over here, just offset a little bit. So I'm going to just poke through from the opposite side and then come up right about there. See, just a little offset from that bead before it. And that's why I cut those tails off close so that the knot will be hidden and there's no tails sticking up. And then I'll just slide my bead on. And come down, again, not right there, but offset in this direction. And like I said, once you poke through, you could feel it. There is a lot of thread, a lot of this red thread in here. So I could feel that I'm going through something, not just air. <laughs> and look, you can't even tell. It's just hidden in there. And then I'll just take, um, make a knot here. So we'll just kind of go through some of those threads back through the loop. Don't pull too tight or you'll kind of pull it out of uh, whack. But there, that's all there is to it. If you find you have an extra bead, just grab a pair of pliers, cover it with your hand or something so you don't get broken glass everywhere, and very gently squeeze and crush. Don't squeeze so hard that the glass of the bead that you're um, crushing is going to cut your thread. That would be tragic. Just go ahead and crush the bead and then dispose of it over a trash can. And also, you know, really, I said it's time consuming, but honestly, it took me just a little over an hour to do all of this. And this will be when I add end caps and a clasp. It came out to about six and three quarter inches long. Yeah, just a little over six inches long, so my calculations were pretty good, and this will be good for a bracelet. Of course, you could use this for anything, but I just love the way this swirls. Here, I'm almost done with my blue spiral rope. I just have one more round of beads to go, so I just thought I would show you in review. And again, this one took just about an hour to do the entire thing. So it's not a huge project. If you're just making a bracelet, if you're making a necklace, of course it's, you know, it's as long as you need it to be. Make that go in between those two. And go to the next, pop it over, slide it down, push it here in between. Yeah, 
Yeah, this little one right before the big one really wants to sneak out of the way. So <laughs> be watching for that. And there's that. And then to finish it up, I'm just going to do a slip stitch in each of these around and that will pull all of the beads that last row into proper alignment. Just go under and pull through just the same way you've been doing except that you don't have a bead on there. Another thing you might consider is because of the way we're finishing these with bead caps you might consider having a row of just very small beads at the beginning and the end, or a couple of rows of very small beads that will fit, I guess like this is pretty lumpy here, they'll fit a little bit better into the bead caps that we're going to use just to cover up and finish off the ends something I kind of didn't think about and I'm not going to worry about it like I showed you before. And then to finish it we'll just cut a little bit of a tail and pull that through that final loop and that is all fastened off. So we have the ropes that remain, different amounts of beads, different sizes, this one's really interesting the way it curls because of the, the the big beads and the small beads. And think about if you did like a you know an eight seven six five four three uh, whatever sizes, and you would have a very dramatic torquing. So how do you finish these off into projects? Well, I believe the key here is bead caps, some kind of decorative bead cap, and you'll have to find ones that are large enough to finish off the ends. For something like this, I would probably take an eye pin and catch the loop of the eye pin in some of these threads at the end, and then also a little bit of two-part epoxy wouldn't hurt. Like with this one, you would have to be careful because you've got gaps that it can ooze out. So using just the right amount would be a key. But there are lots of different caps out there. I'll have links to a few of these. This one, I sorry, I can't have links to because I got this at a bead show. This would be very cool to have like on a necklace. Another thing you can do Let's make two of these for the sides of a necklace. So let's pretend that these went together really well, <laughs> which they don't. But let's pretend they do, the, that they match well. You can finish your ends with bead caps, have an eye pin with loops coming out here, and dangle your pendant from this center. And that would look amazing, very dramatic. And then you could just make two lengths of your cord, however long you need them to be. Of course, finish the other ends with caps and then have chain going around the back of the neck. So you don't have to have this entire thing. I mean, this might not be comfortable to go around the back of the neck, but you could definitely finish it off like that. There are some bead caps like these. Now these happen to be a little too small for this. So, you know, just a tiny bit too small, but if I had maybe two or three rows of like size eight or ten seed beads in here, that would be a perfect spot to glue right into one of these bead caps. So you, you may have to choose your bead caps after you finish your crochet work. Personally, I, I think you can choose these all you want before you do your project, but you'll probably find you'll be able to find the ones that best suit once you have it all done. So it's nice to have a variety. Usually what I do is I go to Art Beads and I order a whole bunch, and then when I get them I can try out the ones. And so there are two styles of bead caps. There's the ones like these that have a hole, in which case you would use an eye pin. Like I said, probably hook it, 
one loop onto some of the threads here, add some glue, thread this on, and then make a loop on this end and add your findings to that. There's also this style which does not have a hole through the end. Of course this is way too small for any of these but I'm just showing you the style and it has a loop here in which case you will definitely have to have glue to glue it in and of course you'd need bigger ones. Just to show you how I finish the ends with the bead caps, I'm sure there are other ways of doing it. This is just one way and the way I'm doing it, I'm using a two-part epoxy. I have one that takes about 90 minutes to dry and 24 hours to be fully cured. That way I give myself plenty of time. The five minute epoxy is just too fast for me. And this is a scrap of trash. <laughs> <laughs> this is a scrap of plastic I pulled out of my trash can. I mixed up just a little, like, less than a pea size amount of each. You don't need a lot. Mixed it thoroughly. And I'll set this off to the side for a moment. I've already done one end. What I have here is an eye pin, which I already opened. I've trimmed my thread here, and I'm just going to use the hook of that open eye and gather several of these threads. So like this one is kind of sticking out to the side, which is why I'm going for that one. Come in. There's that one. Just get a couple more in there for security. Then I'll use my pliers to close that loop. Okay. Get my epoxy. And this is a great little trick. Just tuck this bag w with your, or scrap of paper, or, you know, an envelope that's junk mail or something. Tuck it someplace in your studio that's out of the way. And then you can test this. And when this is fully cured, you'll know that your bracelet is fully cured. Now I'm going to add a good amount of this just all over these threads. I'm going to use my toothpick and kind of poke it down in there and really get them good and coated. Uh, it depends on the size of bead cap you have if you and the style. If you have one that's more closed in or fully closed in you can be... What is that? That's not epoxy. I don't know what that is. Maybe some of the trash I picked up. Um, you could be more liberal with it but this one kind of has these open slots so I don't want to risk having epoxy oozing out of it. So I'm I'm going to be, you know, generous and get those good and coated, but I don't want to have too much. Just enough so that those threads are really good and coated with the epoxy. Set this out of the way so I don't drag my hand through it. And now you can put this on. I did a wrapped loop. You could just do a simple loop, but I think a wrapped lo loop looks a little nicer. So I'm just going to grab that right where it comes out. I'm pushing this down onto the, the beadwork. Give that a 90 degree bend. Grab that with my round nose pliers. Start to make a loop. If you want to know more about making wrap loops, I've done a whole Friday Findings video on those. I'll uh, link to that in the materials list if you need more information. Finish the loop. And then I'm just going to grab that eye pin and start to wrap it around that little bit of wire that I bent that I left sticking straight up from the cap. I'm just going to wrap this around. I think I did four wraps on the other side, so I'll try to do the same on this side. Try to make them neat next to each other. That'll work. I'm going to back that out a little so I can get in there with my wire cutters. Now the hole on top of this cap little brass bead cap is a little big. So 
So this, this actually wants to go back down in there, except there's a little bit of wire here that wants to poke out. So I'm going to hold my loop with my round nose pliers, grab that bit of wire with my chain nose and tuck it in. But what happens is that now this wants to slip up over it. Can you see that? And I don't want it to dry that way, which is why I have the binder clip here. This works perfect just to hold it in place for me. So I'm, I've got this pulled down pretty hard. And that's up a little higher than I want it. But once I clamp this on, that's going to slip you know, the bead work is pushing that up, so that's going to be exactly where I want it. And now I'm going to let that dry. Once it's dry, I can add a clasp, an extender chain, and my bracelet's done. Looking for your next seed beading project? You'll want to check out the seed beading playlist I put together for you, full of designs, tips, and inspiration using seed beads. Happy creating!